If I were to summarize the story of the Bible, I would do it in this way. It opens with God as the king of the universe. He establishes a special relationship with the nation of Israel. This special nation eventually rejected God from being king and asked for a man to rule over them in order to be like the nations around them in 1 Samuel 8. God gave them a king. He gave them many kings and the kings ended up becoming the problem. Even the best of them had flaws. The books of 1st and 2nd Kings tell of this very sordid story. But the prophets announced that God will rule as king once again. And this is what Israel longed for during their years of exile. When Jesus came on the scene, he seemed to be the likely candidate, the one who would deliver them from their oppressors and create a sovereign nation once again. The gospel accounts support their expectations, but the disciples of our Lord were thrown for a loop because the kingdom that God established was not the kingdom that they expected. When Jesus stood before Pilate in John 18 and verse 36, he said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I would not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this world. Twice Jesus emphasizes the point that his kingdom is not of this world. Now this is not to say that the kingdom had nothing to do with this world. John makes the striking statement in Revelation 11 and verse 15, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. When Jesus says that his kingdom is not of this world, he is saying that the source or the origin of his kingdom is not of this world. The disciples were right about Jesus. He was the one through whom God would rule. He was seated on David's throne when he ascended and was exalted to sit at his father's right hand. And this is one of the main points of Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 36. The supernatural activity that accompanied Jesus' ministry is another indicator that his kingdom was not of this world. When Nicodemus approached Jesus by night, he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him, John 3 and verse 2. We often think of the signs that Jesus performed as evidence that he was God in the flesh, and that's fine. John 20 verses 30 and 31 reveal this. But it is evidence of more, in particular of the otherworldly nature of the kingdom. One of the many supernatural activities of our Lord was casting out demons. On one occasion, he was accused of having done so by the prince of demons. And after reasoning with his accusers, Jesus informed them, If it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Luke 11 and verse 20. Friends, Jesus' power over the demonic world was evidence that the kingdom is come. Jesus implied the same thing when the disciples of John came asking if he was the one to come or whether they should be looking for someone else. Jesus replied to them in Matthew 11, verses 4 through 6. He said, Go and tell John what you hear and what you see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. And the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Friends, this echoes what Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 35, verses 5 and 6, and also chapter 61 and verse 1. Anyone that is somewhat familiar with Isaiah would have recognized Jesus' response as a prophetic indicator concerning his kingdom. Now friends, there are other aspects of Jesus' kingdom that distinguish it as otherworldly. But one final aspect is its permanence. Kingdoms of men come and go. They have been removed or shaken. But we have received a kingdom that as the writer of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews 12 and verse 27 that cannot be shaken. And friends, it cannot be shaken because it is not of this world.
Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today, and have a blessed day.